It's good to see you this morning in the Lord's house. We're going to get our service started, and we certainly appreciate you being here this morning. Uh, we look around. We've got several folks that are missing. I certainly hope and pray that uh, they're not uh, going through anything real difficult, but let's pray for them. They'll be back with us in our next service. I failed to mention this morning uh, Brother Rick Hatchett. He was here earlier this morning, but he um, left to go back home. Uh, he got sick, so you pray for Brother Rick. He's been having some problems uh, this past week. And uh, continue to pray for Brother Bill Strawn. He's uh, at home, and uh, hopefully he'll be back with us in another couple of weeks. Good to have Sister Woodbury with us this morning, and glad she's doing well, and we've been praying for her a lot. Continue to pray for Brother Clarence. I understand that Brother Clarence may be here tonight. So uh, if he gets to make it tonight, that'll be a blessing. And then, of course, uh, all the others, Brother Jesse and Sister Becky, and pray for Brother Willie. He's sitting out in the um, vestibule. He had not having some problems, and I just appreciate really making an effort to get here. A lot of people would stay at the house if uh, they felt like he did this morning, but I pray that you would just ask God just to help him and bless him. And it's good to see you. I hope all of you had a happy Thanksgiving. Now we got Christmas to look forward to. But let me just say that we have Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter, and every other day, every day of the week, because the Lord certainly has been good to us, and the Lord certainly has blessed us. And let me just say that whatever you need this morning, God's able to meet that need. And uh, he'll take care of every problem, every situation that you may have. If you'll just give him a half a change, God can work it out and take care of it. Let's stand and go to the Lord in a word of prayer. We'll ask the Lord's blessings to be upon uh, the service this morning and pray that we'll just magnify our wonderful Savior and bring him glory and praise for our ever and all things that he's done for us and what he's going to do. Uh, Brother Mickey, would you pray for us? Congregation may be seated.
because you weren't looking for him. <laughs> but I'm glad the Holy Spirit of God seeks us out. Every one of us this morning would probably be in hell if it wasn't for the fact that the Holy Spirit of God sought us out. And the high sheriff of heaven came and arrested our soul, birthed us and born us into the family of God. And I'm glad he found me just in time. I don't know where you were when the Lord found you. You might have been right at the very bottom of the barrel. You may have been at the end of the rope with no knot tied in. But it makes no difference where you were or where you're at. <laughs> he can reach you Amen. just in time. Amen. I like that song. I, I, we had, they had sung it maybe a couple of times. But y'all sing out. Brother Rick, you sing out. You sing louder than that. <laughs> Turn him up, Jamie. Let's sing. Amen. Sing it. Turn to page 67. We'll sing at Calvary. First, second, and last stand. Please stand.
Hendrick said, say a few words. <laughs> a few words. <laughs> well, you know, the Lord's been good to us. He certainly blessed us, and we praise His sweet name for all that He's done. I'll take the opportunity to just mention to you, I appreciate all of those of you that have uh, taken the names of the children in Mexico to prepare boxes for them, and some have already brought them back, and I appreciate you being uh, doing that and getting that ready. And Diane, did you ever figure out how to wrap that thing? You got it? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I think Michael probably had to help him. <laughs> no, I, I don't forget too much. But uh, but anyway, we had, I think, 65, 64, 65 names. All those names were taken. We need for you to have those boxes back, uh, please, by the 16th of this month. That will be the third Sunday in this month. And there will be a gentleman that will be coming by uh, that we're going to meet over at the Cracker Barrel on Highway 290, headed down to Zapata, Texas, and we'll, he'll pick those up and deliver them to Mexico for us, so you be sure to get yours in by at least December the 16th, and um, that'd be a real blessing. And don't forget other activities. The, the adult choir is going to be doing their cantata on December the 23rd. I think the children are doing theirs on December the 16th. Is that a.m. or p.m.? Children. P.m., December the 16th in the p.m. service. The children will be doing their Christmas program. And uh, so you pray for the young people and also those in the adult choir that God will just bless and use uh, them to honor the Lord Jesus and pray for those that are directing, that God will just give them the wisdom and the insight. But above all, pray that we'll be a witness to the Lord Jesus Christ and bring him honor, praise, and glory. Now, we have Christmas trees up above the church here. And if we have any men in the church that could help us, especially in the evenings, that could stay a night or two during the week, it certainly would be real helpful uh, we could split it up so that everybody wouldn't be there at one time in, in the evenings. Uh, and uh, if you can do that, just see us after the church, and we'll try to line that up. We were sort of thinking about what we might do, as, do with that as a fundraiser. I think we found out this morning what we're going to do with it. We're going to have to buy a new copy machine, looks like. And uh, so maybe we can take that and, and um, add that toward being, uh, buying a copier for the church. And if you want to, unless you just want to donate one, that would be all right. If you got a got one or a new one or buy one. But anyway, that's probably what we'll end up having to do is buy a new copier because our bulletins didn't come out very good this morning. But anyway, God supplies the need, and we just need to trust him. Y'all just liven up. Now, you might eat a lot of turkey this past week. But now let's just liven up a little bit this morning. We ain't going to go sleep. Amen? And we're going to have a good time and rejoice in the Lord. I've already been blessed knowing that the Lord has got to me just in time. Amen? But you continue to pray for the service this morning, for all the requests. And pray that God's will will be done. And you pray for the rest of the song service. Brother Rick. Amen. Let me remind the choir at 4.30 today is practice. We just have a few weeks before our Eastern, I mean, excuse me, Christmas katata. So uh, just pray for us that we'll follow the Lord's will and, and get it right for Jesus' sake. And that's all that really matters. I'm glad that one time I know I was a worthless man. And I realize that. But I'm glad he found me just in time. I'm glad he sought me. And I, I'm glad that my Sunday school teacher said this morning that whosoever will may come. Thank God, yeah. And I'm glad that he saved me to the other most. Amen. You pray for the choir as they sing.
Let's all take a hymn book, turn to page 55. We'll sing the first, last, and, excuse me, first, second, and last stanza. Please stand, the choir will be dismissed. When we all get to heaven. said make a joyful noise because all of a sudden my allergies just wanted to act up on my voice. That's all right too. But I'm glad one day that I'm going to be home with the Lord. Hey, we're just pilgrims passing through, strangers. We're like Abraham looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. God certainly has been good to us this morning, and I praise him for everything he's done in our hearts and lives. This song talks about the blood. You know, I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ, that just one drop was enough to cover all of our sins. Have you to measure just one sin you're seeking forgiveness when your heart knows within our God will not judge us on how big to imagine 
how this miracle took place. It was love beyond measure. My God's amazing grace. Sometimes when we're weary, we might stumble and fall. I'm glad my Savior's precious blood has covered it all. Oh, the blood, the blood covered it all. Love has no boundaries since it's paid in full. Jesus knew in the beginning that man would surely you glad there's not one sin left uncovered when you come to him boy i appreciate the good song service this morning all of all of it centers right around the forgiveness of sin and calvary and we got certainly more than uh, we deserve we didn't give what we deserve we got mercy thank god instead of judgment and uh, i just thank the lord this morning for what the lord's done for us and those that have sung for us and what a blessing that is and I uh, certainly appreciate you being here with us this morning. And if you're here visiting with us for the first time, we're certainly thankful and glad that you're here with us. And if you're here and been here more than one time, we just thank you so much for coming back and being a part of our services. But let me just say this morning that the most important thing is your relationship with Jesus Christ. And let me just say you're not here by accident. You say, well, preacher, the only reason I came this morning because I was forced to come. It's called the Holy Ghost of God, amen. amen. Say, well, no, it's because of my wife or my husband or my children. No, no, no. They, that might be who sort of prodded you a little bit, but it's the Holy Ghost of God that's got you in this place. And you're not here by accident because the fact of the matter is that no matter what your need is this morning, it can be met in the person of the Lord Jesus. I can't meet it. These people that sing in the choirs can't meet it. Those that sing specials for us, those that play the instruments can't meet it. But I'm telling you, the one that we sing about and the one that we praise, he can meet that need this morning, whatever it may be. I like that song, when we all get to heaven, we'll sing and shout when we get over there. I'll tell you right now, folks, we might as well get into a little practice. We've got a lot to shout about and praise the Lord about. And my goodness, when you see people raise their hands out in the congregation, these good songs with the tremendous message that they have in it, Boy, it blesses my soul and thrills my heart when I see people raise their hand in recognition of what Jesus Christ has done for them. What a joy it is to be in the Lord's house. Amen? All right. Let's have the ushers to come forward, and we'll receive our offering this morning. And you give us given unto the Lord, and I'll the Lord to bless you. And while they're coming, let me mention that on December the 9th, that'll be the second Sunday in December, the ladies are going to have a... Ladies' breakfast and ornament exchange uh, at 9 o'clock that morning. All you ladies are invited to come. Bring your family and friends. If you bring a visitor or a family member, uh, bring an extra ornament so nobody will be left out. And that will be on December the 9th. And then next Sunday, next Sunday morning, we're going to have our baptismal service. 
We've got several people that need to be baptized, and uh, so we're going to do that next Sunday morning, the Lord's willing. We'll have to clean the baptistry and get it good and clean and, and get it ready to fill, and, and let's move the waters in the baptismal pool, and that would be a blessing. I'm just wondering how many do we have uh, this morning that's here, this candidate to be baptized. Would you stand so we can get some type of an idea? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's the number of grace, amen. It's by the grace of God you got in, amen. Woo, it's by the grace of God we all got in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. You just bring a change of clothes and uh, uh, we'll baptize you. And we have baptized them when they come without a change of clothes. They just had to go home wet. Amen. But uh, if anybody else needs to be baptized between now and then, and there may be some that's not here this morning that needs to be baptized that may come in, but we have at least five this morning. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you... Oh, the cards in okay. okay. we got Christmas cards and calendars that's made available. Now, we're not doing this as a market money thing. These are just some good Christmas cards. It's got King James verses in them, and it's got Merry Christmas in it. It don't have Happy Holidays or Season's Greetings. It's got Merry Christmas. You can't buy these in the store today, folks. It's sad to say. And that's the reason we bought these, to make them available for the church. We've already sold some. But uh, you can see Frankie after the church... Every one of them, all of them are $6 a box. Now, some of them's already gone, but we do have a few of this type that has 16 cards in it for $6. We have some nice calendars that are $6 that you can write on with a pencil and a race. We have them. They're also 6 Everything's 6 to keep it simple. But if you'd like to have any of those, just see Frankie after the service, and she'll be able to help you with that, okay? All right, let's go to the Lord in word of prayer, and let's ask God's blessing to be upon the offering. Brother Jamie, would you come up and lead us in prayer? And ask the Lord's blessing to be upon the offering this morning. And may the Lord bless you in your giving. Amen. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day, Lord, that you've allowed us to be in your house today, Lord. We're Thank thankful you. for the spirit we felt this morning, Lord. We're thankful for the blood that you shed on Calvary for our hearts, Lord, and for our souls, Lord. Lord, we pray that you'll just help us this morning, Lord, to remember that blood, Lord. And Lord, we pray that if there's anyone here that hasn't experienced it, Lord, that, that today will be the day that they'll come to know you, Lord, before it's too late. Lord, we pray that you'll just be with the prayer requests made mention today here, Lord. We pray that you just have your will and your way with each and every one, Lord. Be with the offering that we're about to receive, Lord. Just use it for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
I don't know about y'all, but I sort of want to make the devil mad this morning. Yeah, I don't want to make him mad. Say, why do you want to do that for, preacher? I've heard preachers say, well, I want to shake him out of the bush this morning. I've heard some preachers say, well, if he's in the bush, let him stay in there. <laughs> well, I sort of feel that way too, but I'll tell you right now, he don't stay in the bush very much because he hounds God's people to death. He attacks us all the time. But I'll tell you right now, I think we ought to serve notice to the devil this morning of whose side we're on. Let him know that we're not out for the count. We're not holding up no white flags of surrender. We're just going to keep on keeping on to Jesus comes. Normally, normally we ask for a Thanksgiving offering. How God's blessed you in, uh, in the course of the year and they make special envelopes for Thanksgiving offering. And uh, we didn't do that this year. But I'll tell you what the Lord just laid on my heart to do this morning. Is those of you that would like to give a special Thanksgiving offering to our missions. I want us to sing that song. God, now listen, I know. How many, how many, I know it's been Thanksgiving week. I know we had plenty to eat. I know you had turkey and dressing, cranberry sauce, potato salad, green beans, banana pudding, chocolate cake, and all the good stuff like that. But I guarantee you there's somebody here this morning, the devil really give a fit this week. There's probably some folk here this morning that the devil really beat up this week. But let me just say this morning, folk, we're on the winning side. We, don't, we, we may get in the valley, but thank God we don't stay in the valley. <laughs> but even if we do, <laughs> the God that's the God on the mountain is the same God that's the God in the valley. He never changes. He changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's promised never leave us nor forsake us. He's promised to be with us no matter what. And I want us to stand and I want us to sing. Well, we'll just sing all of it. Maybe I can remember it. Y'all started off. Yeah, most of y'all know it. Because I can't sing it very well this morning anyway. i got a bad throat. But, um, and while we're singing that, you just come and drop whatever the Lord lays on your heart in the, in the offering plate. Uh, in the uh, jug. Don't mind me. It might be a dollar. Some might want to feel real generous and give two dollars. I hope none of y'all spent God's money on Black Friday. Because <laughs> I'll tell you right now, you'll have a Black Monday if you did. Amen. I just believe God's, God's, the Lord's is to come first. Amen. His is to come first. Well, preacher, I'll give my tithes after I pay my insurance, my bro- buy my groceries, and Paid my car payment, my house payment, my cable bill, my new, my new boat I just bought, and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with having those things. And you see, the thing about it is you can still have them and do what's right pleasing God because he said he'd add those things unto you. And I believe he'll bless you in many ways. Let's stand, if you would, please. And let's play that, Sister Linda. Y'all play it loud. Turn that bass up right here. <laughs>
Thank you. You may be seated. And I'll tell you right, folks. I'm glad that we have something that don't ever wear out. It don't ever grow old. It don't ever give out. I'm glad this morning that we are drawing from a, a never-ending supply. We never have to worry about exhausting the resources of an almighty God. You know, the Lord found us just in time, as the choir sang a moment ago. He saved us just in time. And I know there may be some here this morning that may be here that's never been saved and never trusted Christ as Savior. Let me just say this morning that no matter what your need is, he's able to help you. It's sad to say that a lot of times people that are saved sometimes get into situations and circumstances and positions that affords them discouragement. And disheartened. It causes them to begin to look on their circumstances and their situations without the help of God. Let me just say this morning, God is able. And I just praise this sweet holy name for not, what, not, not only what he's done for me, but I praise him for what he's done for you. As I look around over the congregation this morning... It is pretty evident that God's been good to you. It's pretty evident that there's been times that he's helped you and delivered you when you felt like there was no way, no way out. I'm glad God's able. I want you to stand, if you would, again to Psalms 100. Amen. I want us to read Psalms 100 once again. You say, preacher, you're going to preach the same message? Nope. Same passage, but a different message. And I'm glad the Word of God never grows old. I'm glad it's forever settled in heaven. Let's read it together, as we've had the last two Sundays. Begin reading at verse number 1. The Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And may God add the blessing to the reading of his word, and you may be seated. What a tremendous psalm. I mentioned this to you at the beginning a couple of weeks ago when we read this together for the first time that it's recognized as being a psalm of praise. One of my favorite songs is uh, a song that's played 
when, when, it, when it's sung, they, there's a group named the Fifers that sing this song, and when they sing this song, they have a trumpet solo within this song. I think probably one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard in my life. And I know Amazing Grace is beautiful, the Old Rugged Cross is beautiful, and that's not taking anything away from those songs. But that song is entitled, He Looked Beyond My Faults and Saw My Need. I've already mentioned this morning that no matter what your need is, Jesus can meet it this morning. And let me just say that our faults certainly are many. My faults were many. My faults were not too numerous that God's blood and mercy and grace couldn't forgive me of them. And for that reason, this morning, I am so thankful that he looked beyond my fault and not only saw my need, but he saw my needs, plural. My faults were many. My needs were many. Your faults were many. Your faults, I mean, your needs are many. Every one of us this morning certainly should be thanking the Lord because He looked past those faults and He did not, hmm, He did not reward us according to our iniquities. But instead He saved us. So Brother Roddy sings that song for us sometimes. Mercy walked in. We stood before God guilty, as guilty could be in our sinful life. We had no one to plead our case and to plead our cause. We were guilty and facing judgment. And that judgment was going to be handed down by an all-righteous and an almighty and an all-right God because he does everything right. But the day that we stood before him, helpless before an almighty God. Our advocate, yes, amen. Our go-between, our mediator, (laughs) glory to God, stood between us (laughs) and a holy God. And he said, Father, put that on my account. I know they're false or many. I know they failed you many times. But Lord, he said, I want you to put that on my account. I want to take care of that. I want to pay for that sin debt. And let me just say this morning that he paid it all for you and for me and for the whole world. During the song service this morning, as I look out over the congregation, I can see some of you weeping and crying. Being reminded of the day that Jesus saved you. And how that God moved into your life and made a difference. And let me just say, if he moves in, folks, there's going to be a difference. I'll guarantee you, something as big as God moves in the the side of us, as small as we are, you can rest assured, it's going to show on you. Amen? I believe that with all my heart. And every one of us were guilty, and every one of us didn't deserve nothing but hell itself. <laughs> but mercy walked in. I'm so thankful that he looked beyond my fault, and he saw my need. I'd just like to mention a few things this morning, just something real simple. And then we'll go to the house, and you can have your lunch. Shoes, you can have a nap. Then you can come back at 4.30. It's going to be a short nap, but you can come back for 4.30 for choir practice. And the young people's play practice also is at 4.30 uh, this afternoon. So have your children here at 4.30. One of the greatest things that ever happened to me and ever happened to you is when the day Jesus saved us. You know, November the 23rd was my spiritual birthday. That would have been Friday, right? I was been saved 45 years this past Thursday. Lord, I just thank you for that. 
Haven't always been what I should have been. Oh, I failed him and I let him down many times. <laughs> but I want to thank him this morning for never failing me one time. And never let me down one time. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. <laughs> it makes no difference. God is able. And for that, I'm thankful this morning. And certainly you should be thankful. Those of you that stood a moment ago for baptism. Baptism will do absolutely nothing for your salvation. It will not save you. It will not, it won't wash off the outward dirt, let alone the inward dirt and mess and corruptness inside of you. But it's just a testimony of the fact that you've died to the old way of life. Been saved by the grace of God. Listen, let me just say this morning. If you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt, and you don't know know that you've had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and that you're saved by the grace of God, you don't need to get into the baptismal pool. But if you know that you know that you know, that's a good thing. To let the devil and the world know that I've died to the old way of life. The old man's dead. And the new man is alive. The Bible says we become new creatures in Christ Jesus. And thank God for that. There's just a couple of things this morning that I'm thankful for. That I want to share with you. And I think that we can share these things. That I'm going to mention to you that we're thankful for. Number one. I'm thankful that he looked beyond my fault and saw my need. And I'm thankful for a Savior. Now, I know we just left Thanksgiving, but I want to read a couple of verses to you that has to do with Christmas. I like Christmas. Oh, what a, what a joy it is. Well, what a joy it is to, just to be up there where the, where the trees are and people stop by and, and uh, we get to share with them the Lord and those that are saved and those that, that know the Lord, how they in return share with us. This past Thursday or Friday, Friday we were up there, and there were three ladies that stopped up there. I'm telling you what, them women could talk. <laughs> Brother Donnie said, the only time they quit when they was taking a breath. <laughs> and the other one was talking while the other one was taking a breath. But it was all good talk. They were from Union, and they'd come by here, and they would... They were on their way to Fred's, <laughs> and they stopped by, and they must have stayed two days. No, must, <laughs> must have stayed an hour, I guess. And they were bragging on their church and bragging on the Lord and how the Lord's blessed them and what the Lord is doing. And, and they began to talk about how that they've been blessed by just riding by this place, Brother David. <laughs> Seeing what the Lord's done for us. And in return, we were able also to share with them some of the things and the marvelous things that God hath done for us as a church and a church family and as a ministry. Had it not been for a Savior that came many, many years ago, folk, we'd have nothing to brag about. We'd have nothing to boast in. We'd have nothing to be proud about. But I'm thankful this morning he looked beyond my salt faults and saw my need of a Savior. And a Savior came into this world to save sinners and keep them from going to hell. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, I said, is a familiar portion of Scripture concerning, and it's read a lot around Christmas time. It says, Now unto you a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his, gov of his increase of his, of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. From hence, even forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Over in the book of Matthew. 
I'm turning so you'll have time to turn also. Of course, you know where I'm going. Matthew chapter number 1. There we'll read a few verses of the scripture. Begin reading at verse number 21. <clears throat> the Bible says in verse number 21. And, he sh- and she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. 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 There's just something about that name. Aren't you glad tonight or this morning that we can call upon the name of the Lord Jesus? And he, the God himself, looked beyond our fault and saw our need. And he sent a Savior in the person of his precious darling son, the Lord Jesus Christ. All because hell-deserving people needed a Savior. He said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save. His people from their sins. Now all this was done that was might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying. Behold a virgin. Yes I said a virgin. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. Said preacher you explain that. I don't have to explain it. It's in this blessed book. All I got to do is accept it and believe it, amen, as being a truth to my heart. And the God said that he was born of a virgin, and that's exactly how he's born. And let me just say this morning, if you're going to be saved by the grace of God, you must believe it also. We were talking this morning how that the Scriptures and the Word of God has been changed. And being changed all the time. How that they say that our blessed Savior. I'm talking about the Savior that came because we had a need. Say our blessed Savior came by the way of being born, from, uh, uh, being fathered by a blunt-headed soldier. How, how blasphemous that is. How, how terrible that is. Uh, a person that says that, they're on their road to hell. Can Jesus save them? Yes, they can if they'll turn to him. The Bible says, a virgin with child, and shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. I sort of like that name. Emmanuel. I've always said, many, many years ago, after I got saved, and after I called, got called to preach, I called, answered the call to preach in 1972. And I said, Lord, if you ever let me pastor a church, <coughs> or start a church, this was years ago. I said, Lord, I want to call it Emmanuel Baptist Church. For the simple reason it says, God be with us. And if he were not with us and had not been with us these years, folk, these doors would have never been opened. They never would have been a piano. They never would have been an organ. They never would have been a choir. There never would have been a baptismal pool that we're going to use next Sunday. There never been a congregation sitting here. Had God not been with us. I thank him for that. It's because a savior came. It's because he came. It's to be savior of the world. You see there's other works. There's other churches. There's other places that God has done the same thing. Exactly the same thing that he's done here. But I'm glad to be a part of what the Lord's done in this place. The Bible tells us, it says, Then Joseph, being raised from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. The word Jesus says just simply means Jehovah is salvation. I'm thankful this morning that he looked beyond my faults and saw my need. He saw my need for a Savior to come into my life, to change me, to make make a difference. He saw a need in your life that a Savior needed to come in and change your life and forgive you of your sins and make you fit for heaven. You've heard me say this before, but a Savior is someone that a Savior is someone that can do something that you cannot do for yourself. You cannot save yourself. 
You can't be good enough. You can't give enough. You can't come to church enough. You can't straighten up enough. You can't turn over enough leaves to meet, to get yourself into heaven. It's simply by the Lord Jesus Christ and through Him. And thank God for that song that Sister Beth sings. Oh, what a Savior, amen. When you think about Him, there's nobody like our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Also in the book of Luke, there's several verses of Scripture. Let me read that to you. Luke chapter 2 and verse number 11. Hey, y'all listen up just a little bit now. It's all right to say amen. What happened to our shout? Hey, we've been talking about it's all right to shout amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Luke chapter 2 and verse number 11. Let's see what the Word of God has to say here. It says, verse number 11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I've heard people say, well, have you made Jesus Lord of your life? Whether we make him Lord of our life or not, he is still Lord. He was born to be Savior. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19 and verse number 10 that the Savior came in to seek and to save that which was lost. We needed a Savior. Why? Because we were a lost generation. We were a lost people. There's still people today that are lost. There's still people today that haven't been saved. But let me just say, as long as you have breath in your body, and as long as the Holy Spirit of God is dealing with you, you have an opportunity to be saved and born and birthed into the family of God. And in saying that, let me say this. I've heard people say, well, I'll get saved when I want to. Not so. The only way a person can get saved is when they're drawn by the Holy Spirit of God. And the Bible tells us, it is plain on this, where it says that God's Spirit will not always strive with man. I would ask you a question this morning if you're here and lost and never accepted Jesus as your Savior. How many times have you rejected the Savior? He looked beyond your faults. He saw your need. He, he sent His Son to be a Savior in order that you can be saved. But how many times have you rejected Him and how many times have you refused Him? Not only do I see this morning and am I thankful for a Savior, I'm glad that He looked beyond my faults this morning and saw my need. And He gave me security. I'm safe this morning in the arms of Jesus. He's the one that's watching over me and taking care of me. He's the one that's built a hedge around us and protecting us. He tells us in the Psalms, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'm glad we're not just thrown out there to just make it the best way we can. But an almighty God has a plan for those that are His children that He's going to watch over and take care of. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse number 30, it says, The Lord your God which goeth before you. You ought to underline that. Goeth before you. He shall fight for you. According to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. You say, well, pastor, that's talking to the Israelites. That's Old Testament. Yes, sir, buddy, it sure is. It's all Scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable. And it profits me when I read back and see what He did for His people and His children. But when they rejected and refused Him, He turned to the Gentile nation. And you and I were offered the opportunity to be adopted into the family of God through the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank God this morning, we've got a security that we can count on just like the Israelites had back in the Old Testament. I couldn't help but to underline that. 
that he'll go before you. Another thing that I saw in that verse, not only will he go for, go before you, but he'll fight for you. You know, we think we have to fight our own battles. We think that we have to do it within ourselves. And the Lord says, I'll fight for you. And there's been many a times in our Christian life and our Christian experiences since we've been saved by the grace of God and we know that God can do that. We know that God has done that. But still, yet and, yet and still, we still fail to trust Him like we ought to. He told those people there in the last part of that verse, He says that you did for you in Egypt before your eyes. You see what He did. Every one of us here this morning have experienced how God's delivered us in a lot of situations, in a lot of circumstances. And yet we still fail to trust Him. He'll go before us. He'll fight for us. And we've seen evidence of it you know, in, our, in our previous experiences with God. Then in Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse number 4, I want you to notice this. The Bible says, For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you. He's not only going before you, but he'll go with you. How many times have we said that we never have to worry about struggling through a battle by ourselves? When we get bad news from the doctor, when we get bad news about a tragedy concerning our family, when it seems like the economy of our country is going down the tubes and our nation is going down the tubes, we still have the promise of God that He says, I'll go with you. And in that same verse once again, He says, I'll fight for you. Hmm. You see, nothing takes our Savior by surprise. And you know what? When we speak of security, when you have an enemy, the enemy tries to attack by surprising you. Back several years ago when our nation was attacked by the terrorists in New York City, that was a surprise attack. They weren't expecting that. They're trying to hinder that now, trying to keep that from ever happening again. And whether they can or not, I don't know. But no doubt, that was a surprise. I remember seeing the look of the, on the face of our president, then George Bush, when somebody walked up on the platform. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was at a school down in Florida, I think, talking to some students or something. And they walked up on the platform and they whispered into his ear what had just happened. And all you could see on his face was a state of shock and the element of surprise. Like, I just can't believe that. Can I inform you then this morning to, to you that the devil is our enemy, number one? The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8, As a roaring lion, he walketh about seeing whom he may devour. He throws surprises our way. He throws things our way that will hinder us and hurt us. He throws things our way that will rob us and take away from us, take away from ourselves, take away from our families and take away from our, take away from our churches. And uh, the devil, the sad part about it is we can look around this morning and see people that's not in this building and not in this church because the devil, by the element of surprise, has come in and snatched them out. It may be simple. It may seem simple. It may not seem like much. But he don't need much to get a hold. The devil's our number one enemy. This world is our enemy. We're in this world, but we're not to be of this world. Hey, we say when we all get to heaven a while ago, 
I'll tell you, folks, we ought to act like we're headed there. We ought to be happy and rejoice and praise and thank God for the fact that God's promised us a place called heaven that one day we can enter into where we don't have to worry about the old enemy anymore. We don't have to worry about sin. We don't have to worry about disease. We don't have to worry about sickness. We don't have to worry about crying. We don't have to worry about going through all this junk that we have to go through down here. Thank God one of these days we'll be whole. All that will be over with. But until then, uh, He's going to be with us. He's our security. Thank God for the security that we have as American people with our military. Thank God for every man and woman that has served in our military. Just in a few days, they'll be conducting a service for a young man from over here at Greer that lost his life. Over there defending and fighting for what you and I believe in. There's some, there's some people in this world that are our enemies. They're always attacking God and attacking God's people. There's things in this life that are enemies to us. And those things that you allow to come, come in and to creep in and to rob and take away and steal from you concerning the things of God is an enemy to you. In Job chapter 11 and verse number 18, the Bible says, And thou shalt be secure. <laughs> Woo! I'm glad I'm secure this morning in Jesus. It says, Thou shalt be secure because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. But we're not going down. The church is not going down. The church is going up. And we have security in Him this morning that's watching over and taking care of every one of us. And I'm glad one day He looked beyond my faults and realized and saw that I would never be able to take care of myself. But thank God He saw the need to give me a Savior that could offer me some security in Him. If you don't have that this morning, you need it. You need it. Sister Linda, come to the piano. God said stop right here. Do you have any faults this morning? I'd like to ask you two questions. Number one. Do you have any faults? And number two, do you have any needs? Let's stand, please.